Good evening, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Lemon Legacy Sports Talk. Tonight's presentation is deeply rooted, preserving and celebrating Gullah Geechee heritage. We'll start with our land acknowledgement. William & Mary acknowledges the indigenous people who are the original inhabitants of the lands our campus is on today. The Karen Hakanadaway, Chickahominy, Eastern Chickahominy, Mattapanai, Monacan, Nansman, Nottaway, Pamunkey, Potomac, Upper Mattapanai, and Rappahannock tribes, and pay our respect to their tribal members past and present. Our statement on slavery and its legacies. The Board of Visitors acknowledges that William and Mary enslaved people, exploited them and their labor, and perpetuated the legacies of racial discrimination. The board profoundly regrets these activities, apologizes for them, expresses its deep appreciation for the contributions made by the African and African-American members of its community to the vitality of William and Mary, then, now, and for all time coming, and commits to continue our efforts to remedy the lingering effects of past injustices. At this time, I'll move forward with an introduction of our wonderful <clears throat> panelists this evening. Reginald Tendaji Bailey, Gullah Geechee Consultant. Tendaji is a Gullah Geechee na native of Port Royal in St. Helena Island, South Carolina, in Beaufort County. He is a 2015 graduate of Morehouse College and a former middle school math teacher and a community organizer. As a Gullah Geechee Consultant, he helps to develop programs and events to educate the public about the rich history and culture of Gullah Geechee communities throughout the coastal Southeast. Second, we have Dr. Joyce White, Assistant Professor of English and Gullah Geechee Literature and Cultures, Georgia Southern University. Uh, she's, a, she's a professor at Georgia Southern University. Joyce received her PhD in Humanities with a primary focus in African-American studies from Clark Atlanta University and earned a BA and MA in English from Florida State University. Her research interests include 19th, 20th, and 21st century African-American and diasporic literature as well as African cosmological and spiritual continuities in diasporic literature and cultural productions. And last but not least, we have Dr. Cal R. Fox, Assistant Professor of Communication at the College of Coastal Georgia. Cal received his PhD in Humanities with concentration in African American Studies from Clark Atlanta University and earned a BA in Political Science and African American Studies, as well as an MA in Communication Studies with concentrations in race, political and gender rhetoric from the University of Alabama. His research focuses on the construction and performance of gendered and raced identities, specifically black masculinity. Without further ado, let's give our panelists a virtual applause. Thank you so much for joining us. Sorry, we're <laughs> waiting for a presentation to come. Okay, there we go. Awesome. Well, welcome, welcome. Well, thank you all for for having us. Super excited to to be here. We're currently, and me and Kyle are currently here in Brunswick, Georgia. Uh, I've had an opportunity to visit some of the cultural sites here today, which has been really, really exciting. And uh, uh, Kyle and I and Joyce have been friends for over a decade now, um, and so just super excited to to share in our passion for for this work that we're going to be talking about today. Um, I would like to begin by just talking a little bit about what Gullah Geechee is, um, and so uh, the Gullah Geechee people are the descendants of Africans who were enslaved on the rice, indigo, and sea island cotton plantations in the lower Atlantic coast. Uh, and so that area um, has not been designated as the Gullah Geechee Corridor. It is the only national heritage area dedicated to a group of people. And so throughout um, this area is a number of different communities and organizations that are um, supporting uh, preservation and education about Gullah Geechee culture and heritage. And so we're going to be able to highlight a little bit of the things that are happening um, within each of these communities today. Okay, and um, we have three areas that we're going to talk about. 
um, in terms of Gullah Geechee culture. And we, we are gonna talk about community. We're gonna talk about cultural centers and partnerships. Tendaji, do you wanna begin with uh, community? Awesome, so yes, now that I can see you. <laughs> Uh, community, um, you know, I am from Beaufort, uh, South Carolina, and um, the St. Helena Island community in particular um, has a really, really strong hold on, on Gullah Geechee culture. We've been able to really um, maintain our property, maintain our land, which has really, really given us an opportunity um, to maintain our culture in a really significant way. Um, you'll see throughout the corridor that that is not the same experience. Uh, many different communities have actually lost land, has been, land has been taken from them. Uh, Harris Neck, for example, um, you know, their land was stripped from them. I mean, over 75 different families uh, displaced overnight. Um, and that's a common story, unfortunately, um, that happens throughout the corridor. Um, what you'll see now that's happening, which I think is exciting, is that um, a lot of institutions are um, lending their support to really provide help within the research, and financial resources to help facilitate um, educational programs, to help facilitate symposiums and festivals um, to really, really maintain uh, and preserve the culture and really try to push it forward as we um, begin to address things like climate change and the impact um, that you know, sea level rise will have on our communities that are in these low-lying um, sea barrier island um, areas. So we know that that's gonna impact us uh, fairly soon. The cultural oh. centers. <laughs> yes, um, and uh, as Tendaji has led, I'm very fortunate to be a part of a cultural center, um, Georgia Southern University, who has lent um, itself, its space, its its uh, infrastructure, its money um, towards the project of really um, supporting Gullah Geechee communities within Savannah. I'm in Savannah, they're in Brunswick, <laughs> um, but a part of this, this grand corridor um, that we're talking about. And so, um, Part of what uh, Georgia Southern has been able to do, I'm part of a cluster hire um, in Gullah Geechee studies. Um, we had another hire in history, and then there's some further lines that'll come down the way um, in other areas. And um, it was one of our provost, one of his initiatives to actually establish a Gullah Geechee Heritage Cultural Center, um, which will have its hard opening. It had a soft opening in uh, December, but it will have a hard opening on Juneteenth. Um, and so the, the center um, in its, its very you know, nascent uh, iteration was um, just to do programs, but it's become so much more than that. Um, and the, the university community has really embraced the center so much that it's now becoming more academic in its programming. So both will have like more curriculum um, drives and initiatives along with um, having some more, you know, programmatic um, ideas that are, are coming forth. The other thing that I will say is not only is this happening on a departmental and a college level, but also on a community level. Um, our director of the, the Gullah Geechee Center, Maxine uh, Bryant, calls it community, where the community and the university come together um, and sort of bridge um, what is often seen as very, you know, sort of siloed spaces, um, to bridge those to really talk about the issues that are affecting Gullah Geechee communities and how the university can be a part of solutions, um, not necessarily just stay in academic spaces and present research, but actually become a part of the problem solving. How how can we get our community involved? How can the knowledge that we have within the university help our communities that we're we're a part of, that we are an extension of? So I'm really, really thrilled. Um, I'm new in this position. Um, and part of the position is not, not only um, being able to be a part of this expansion, but also learning, learning from our community board, learning um, the wealth of knowledge that they have um, and the wealth of, of just beautiful uh, culture that's around us. And I have to say that I'm, I am a newly or a newly reconnected <laughs> Gullah Geechee uh, descendant. So it, this is a personal project for me as well as an academic one. 
Well, like Joyce and Tendaji, I have a vested interest in this space and in Gullah Geechee culture. I myself do not identify as Gullah Geechee, but one of my best friends, they do. And <laughs> when I moved down to the area, I'm in Brunswick, Georgia, which is the southern part of the corridor, which is often ignored or seemingly ignored. That's where I come in and the College of Coastal Georgia. I like Georgia Southern and all of their resources. <laughs> we at the College of Coastal Georgia, we don't have a cultural center, but that is something that we are very interested in, not particularly a center, but we are committed to this community and an initiative to highlight the Gullah Geechee community in our region, because we don't just want to say Brunswick and St. Simon Island and Jelka Island, but we want Brunswick South down to Camden and North Georgia, North Florida, sorry. So where do I come in in that? I've proposed a Gullah Geechee initiative to the advancement team, to the provost, and eventually to the president of our college. And this doesn't look like a traditional academic um, initiative, but it'll be a, a compilation of academic cultural and performative things, right? We're not talking about a center where you actually have to hire faculty members to go for this, but those of us that are interested on the campus as well as in the community to come together and actually highlight the brilliance of this culture that is often gone ignored in this area. I came to Coastal a year and a half ago and was stunned that there are other institutions like Georgia Southern, Mercer, Morehouse College, to name a few, who come down and actually study this region. And we do practically nothing and it's in our backyard, right? So I'm trying to not only establish an academic and institutional relationship with the community, but a community within that space, okay? And I just add to that a, a little bit. Um, I think that's so important. And, and I think that that is really what bridges all of what we're saying here today um, in our relationship um, with the Gullah Geechee community is the community, that the community is at the heart of what it is that we do, that this is not about academia or not about academic spaces as much as it is about highlighting this culture and the brilliance and the influence that it has had, not just on the sea islands and in the corridor, but overarchingly in American life and the tapestry of what it is that we call um, American, being American or American, you know, livelihood or lifestyle or the I won't say the American dream or night, but, what <laughs> there. but you know, in the broader sense of who we are in terms of our society and our, our culture. And I think the community is such an important highlight of that. And it is at the center of, I think academic spaces are doing smart moves and you know, putting the community at the, the center of that. So our board are their community members. Um, that this space that we have is for them, actually. It's for them to come in and to, if they want to have a meeting, they can have a meeting in the space. If they want to watch a film, they can have a film. Like they, they are a part of what it is that we do. And I think Kyle put that beautifully in the sense that it is that merging, right, of not just being an academic space, but what the community actually brings to us, because it's, it's from them that we learn. It's from right. that we get the resources um, that we need to be able to articulate the broader and the bigger message um, to greater society. Right. In my proposal for our initiative, I actually said, hey, I don't want to seem like I'm an insider coming or an outsider coming in or a come ya versus the been <laughs> And Those are Gullah Geechee phrases. So <laughs> I don't want to seem like a Kamya and saying, I know what's best for you. Right. So I'm actually gonna host a listening session and invite people into the academic space, but what do you need or what do you want to see from a partnership with us? And how does that look for you, right? And so what you'll find in all of these different communities, they all have different needs, right? Um, I think about places like Mount Pleasant and I'll say Mount Pleasant specifically. Um, that's where your sweetgrass um, sowers, um, sweetgrass um, artists um, are kind of centered at, and, and they are in dire need of, of the actual sweetgrass itself. 
it is you know because of the the erosion on the beaches um the amount of of sweet grass has has decreased the places where they used to be able to pull grass are now becoming private um, privately owned spaces and so you'll find that each community has a very specific need and and one of the things that we are hoping to do with institutional support is to identify um the experts right who can really help to secure the resources to continue um the efforts that that people need to do in their own communities um so we want to talk a little bit about you know how is the Gullah Geechee culture um relevant to us today right oftentimes we can think about it as this um uh period of time that happened during enslavement and reconstruction. And we can oftentimes get kind of caught up in the, the history of that, right? And, and not allow ourselves time to process what's present and what's future. Um, and so one of the things that we can talk a little bit about is tourism. Um, there was a study that was done uh, a few years ago, maybe two years ago, and it was estimated that within uh, heritage tourism, Gullah Geechee heritage tourism, um, anywhere between 31 and $34 billion annually is waiting for us to be, um, uh, waiting to be, to be given um, to communities. But the challenge though, is that there's no real infrastructure in place in order to support the receiving of those funds and to make sure that those funds are actually going to Gullah Geechee people themselves and not to other people who might be trying to benefit off of off of the culture. And so I, what I've seen, um, what I've liked um, so far working with um, the Morehouse Mellon Project, their public history project, is that there's a, a great effort in trying to develop um, exhibits within communities and having communities at the center of telling their stories and making sure that um, the communities are benefiting financially, right, from, from being the storytellers of their own story, being the controllers of their story and their narratives. Um, so that's one of the things. And so I have the great privilege of teaching a course called American Identities, which I get to um, shape however I'd like. And being in rural South Georgia along the coast, that has a particular type of life for Black people that many others don't have. And at a small PWI, I was able to connect kids who are local. Most of our students are from within maybe a 100, 200 mile radius of the school. And they don't know any of this history. They've heard about Gullah or Gullah Geechee culture, but they don't understand what it is. And they don't understand who these people are. So I've had the great privilege of taking them to various plantations around um, the city <laughs> and along the coast. And I say that's a privilege taking them to plantations. Don't think that I'm into plantation tourism because I am not. Right. In fact, I take them to plantations that have not been um, restored or any, in any way and to make sure that they don't host events because I feel that that is blasphemous. Right. Um, but I take them to these spaces to let them know that these people come from this and you should know about the community in which you live in which you attend school, right? And it's all about trying not to erase the culture and actually exposing them to the benefit and again, the brilliance of this particular group of people. I not only do that with my students, but in the friend groups that I have here, and they've allowed me entree into various spaces of their lives. And in all of those spaces, I'm plugging something about the like, Gullah Geechee heritage and Gullah Geechee culture here in rural South Georgia. And you'd be surprised that most of the people who live on St. Simon, Jekyll, uh, Sea Island, they're not natives. <laughs> They come here from those big cities, escaping the city and just want a peaceful, leisurely life, but have no idea or they're very limited in the knowledge that they have about the space in which they live. And I think that's where this type of community institution or university college and partnership can actually benefit uh, us as communists as well as the Benyus. <laughs> Um, I'll add to that. I love that. Um, <laughs> um, part of this, I, you know, when I think about this 
idea of how Gullah Geechee uh, culture is relevant, I have to really go back um, to some very formative years in my life. Um, just briefly, I'll, I'll tell a little story. When I was in sixth grade, I had a project by my social studies teacher. I'm probably giving away my age because I don't, you know, I don't know if they do this social studies anymore the way they used to. But anyway, um, my social studies uh, teachers, Mr. Daniels, said, um, "Go back and you know trace your family and, and come back with a report about you know where you come from." And so I had a lot of my other classmates who were, you know, going to coat of arms and, you know, doing these kinds of very traditional um, studies and, you know, very traditional trajectory of their history. And I kept coming back and my parents were just, you know, they kind of let me be. They were, I know they were clenching their teeth, but they kind of, you know, wanted me to work through it. And I had so much frustration. I just didn't understand. And so I was concerned about my day of my grade. My dad was a high school principal. So um, I was very concerned about my grade. And I went to Mr. Daniels and said, I'm, you know, I'm just not finding anything. I just don't, I don't have information about where I come from or, you know, who my family is. And so he sat down and we had this whole conversation about oral tradition and going back to the people who hold the stories of who your family is, you know. And so I went back to my granddad and part of what I found out in that conversation was an erasure that my great grandfather and my grandfather had migrated to Florida. I thought we were from Florida. I grew up in Miami, but I thought we were from Florida, but they had migrated to Florida. Um, they were from Hemingway, South Carolina. Um, and so there was this whole part of my family that I kind of knew. I mean, it wasn't like we were isolated from them. I knew them. They spoke differently. And I could kind of get it because I was in Miami and, you know, uh, Jamaican Patois and Creole and all of that was a part of my upbringing. So I could understand a lot of what they said. And there were jokes about, oh, you, you're you eating a lot of rice. You must be Geechee. You know, like there are jokes in our family about, oh, so all of these things were in hand, but I just couldn't connect the dots. So it just really wasn't um, a part of the way that we talked about who we were as people, who we be. Um, and so, um, you know, for me, this is a very personal exploration, a very personal idea of why this is relevant to my life. It's the uncovering of a personal history, but it's also an uncovering of history that needs to be told. These stories that need to move forward and need to be kept currently within our discourse about Americans about Black folks in America. Um, I was at an event the other uh, an, uh, the other day with some community members of Gullah Geechee, and they said every Black folk in America is Gullah Geechee. So just claim your heritage, claim it. <laughs> and if that's the case, right? <laughs> if that's the case. That means that all of us, you know, are really responsible. We really have a responsibility and a duty to maintain and preserve a culture that it has really, to be honest, shaped the American landscape very much to the actual ground itself. You want to talk about the formation of rice plantations, right, to our, our own linguistic understandings about food, right, um, sustainability, uh, you know, resources. So when I think about Gullah Geechee and why it, you know, it's relevant um, to me, you know, we talk about generational wealth in this country all the time, right? And while that's important, and I, you know, I get that I'm not, you know, denying that, what I do know is that I am a part of a very wealthy and rich legacy, that the inheritance that my ancestors left for me is what I need to pull forward. So this is a very personal project for me in the sense that I must highlight what it is that they have left in terms of wisdom in terms of knowledge, in terms of way of being, the, the ontology, the philosophy, the cosmology, all of those things that they've left for us. Um, and these just nuggets and jewels that we may not have in the bank account, but we surely have within this culture and it's up to us to really preserve it. Just, I like, sorry. No, go ahead. <laughs> I like that you talk about, you know, your formative years and you know, trying to find this culture, right? My first introduction to Gullah Geechee culture was probably like most Gullah Geechee Island or <laughs> right. Don't mess it up. Gullah Gullah Island. Thank you. So, Gullah Gullah Island. <laughs> I can sing the song better than I can to say the, uh, oh, no. the title. <laughs> but that was my first introduction to the, the uh, culture. And I want to thank Ron and Natalie Days for their contribution to that space. 
because without them, we don't, we wouldn't get this, right? Um, and I was at an, an Easter brunch and one of the women at the brunch, after I was telling her what I was doing um, at work, she was like, oh, well, my kids used to watch a show that came on Nickelodeon called uh, Gullah Gullah Island. I was like, yes, that, <laughs> that's what I'm trying to do. That's what I'm trying to promote here. Right. And so to piggyback a little bit, I um, had, I've been privileged to um, call Ron and Natalie Day's mentors of mine since I was in middle school um, and literally was with them two days ago um, at, at their home. Um, but anyways, also Gullah Gullah Island was my introduction and as well, although I grew up in Buford and, and it, what was wonderful about it, I, I traveled a lot as a kid because my parents were divorced and my father was in uh, a truck driver. So I got to see a lot of the country, but anytime I'd left home, I always had Gullah Gullah Island to turn back to, right? It was always a place. I never felt homesick because I can always turn on television and see home. And I knew that that for me was like a special thing to be able to do, to see my culture, to see people that I knew um, on a national platform, right? Um, but to go back a little bit, like Gullah and Geechee were terms at one point that were derogatory. Um, it was almost as offensive, if not, equally as offensive as the N-word um, to, to many of us. And so for a really, really long time, a lot of our elders rejected um, the terms Gullah and Geechee. And so what we're seeing now in this modern age is that um, because you know a person like in I, my 30s, I'm a millennial, I've only known Gullah and Geechee to be a positive thing. I've only seen it as that. And so that's kind of what's happening as we move forward. Um, the elders are beginning to embrace it a lot more as, a, as an identity, although they've always been proud of their culture, they've always been proud of, of what, who, and what and who they are as far as accepting the term itself, that is a thing that we are constantly in progress of making sure that, um, that they are along with, um, uh, for the ride as we move in the future, right? Um, and so that's where we're headed. We're headed to a place where all of us can be on this, on this bus together, proud and, and holding our banner um, and preserving the culture in our own ways, right? I like to 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 think of of Gullah Geechee as a a portal that can be entered in so many different ways. Like if you are into literature, you know, there's so many books that you can read. If you're into science, right, um, the water is right there for you to to look into, right. If you are uh, into art and culture, like it's all right there. It's just, but you know, what is your way into, into the door, right? And so that's what I hope that people begin to, to discover and find, you know, their way into, into our culture. Yeah, and I think just to piggyback off of um, what Tendaji is saying, which is, is so important, um, and I think the work in, in the academy um, needs to do this, especially in places like Brunswick and places like Savannah. Um, my campus is in Statesboro, but still um, many of our students are Gullah Geechee. And so, you know, being able to see themselves represented um, in the classroom, as small as, you know, pieces of literature, I've had students really say, oh my gosh, you know, I can't believe we read this, or oh my gosh, I can't believe we watched Daughters of This, I can't believe, you know, to be able to be a part of those things and to see their culture reflected um, within the classroom is, is such an amazing um, experience for them. But then also moving forward and teaching the next cadre of, you know, we, school teachers that are going to be teaching Gullah uh, students, you know, within the K-12 system, um, graduate with students that are going to um, be going into, you know, the professorial, sorry, the, ac the academy, <laughs> not today, my tongue is not loose right today, but anyway, um, that are going to be performing these jobs, it's important to give them the tools and the resources to be able to speak to this beautiful culture, and then also um, to be able to, to teach it and to move it forward, that it, it always stays relevant, that it's always current um, within our, 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 our landscape. Awesome. Well, speaking of current, um, <laughs> we can talk a little bit about some of the projects that we are currently doing. If you can give me one second to get the screen is sharing and let's go to Canva. <laughs> um, and so I am a Gullah Geechee creative consultant at 
this moment. And I'm having the opportunity to work with thin on um, the communities throughout the um, the corridor. Um, one of those areas is Atlantic Beach. If you're not familiar with Atlantic Beach, Atlantic Beach is the historically black part of Myrtle Beach. It's about a four block uh, community that is uh, uh, its own town. Um, they are self-governed. And many of us uh, probably associate Atlantic Beach with the Black Bike Week Festival that happens. Um, but it is a Gullah Geechee community and they are having their first Gullah Geechee Festival um, in over three decades. Uh, and so I'm privileged to be on the planning committee for, for that festival. And so I invite you all to join us down uh, June 23rd through the 25th. They will have uh, Ron Days. They will have Cecil Williams, who's a, a civil rights um, photographer. Uh, Sun Michelle will be there, who is the uh, professor of language, a uh, Gullah linguist uh, from uh, Harvard University. A number of different performers. So we definitely invite you um, to be there as well. For Memorial Day weekend, one of the projects I am the publicity and logistics coordinator for is the Evo Landing 220th commemorative event. Now, if you're not familiar with Evo Landing, uh, Evo Landing was an event that happened back in 1803. Um, Evo is a, a, a tribe, a group of people um, from, the, uh, from Nigeria. Um, and they were brought to these shores. <clears throat> illegally. And um, as they approached the shores, they were, were recognizing and realizing that they were about to be enslaved for, you know, for, for what they knew was the rest of their lives. And they refused and resisted and decided instead to commit their bodies to the ocean instead of submitting themselves to enslavement. And so to commemorate their, their sacrifice, their resistance, their great resistance, um, we will be commemorating that and we'll have the opportunity actually to visit the site where this actually happened at Dunbar Creek. So if you're interested in, in joining us, that will be Memorial Day weekend um, here in St. Simons. And all of that information should be coming out tomorrow, actually. Um, one of the other projects I'm super excited about, I am um, uh, also like nervous and trying to uh, shed my vulnerability a little bit, but I am sharing my art with the world and um, it is putting me in a really, really interesting place. So anyways, the project is called Seeking Soaring. I applied for a South Carolina Arts uh, Commission grant about a week or two after my departure from my former place of employment. And it really has sent me on a new journey. And I'm super excited to share the things that I've learned along the way. Um, and so that should be coming out um, in June. But we may have an opportunity, if the time permits, to hear a sneak peek uh, of that project uh, later on today. All right. Well, what's going on with, with me in my world? I'm really stuck in this uh, space of academia and trying to bridge the college here and the community. So what I've been doing, hosting various events for Black History Month. We hosted a screening of The Language We Cry In, which Tendaji was one of the panelists who did the Q&A. And then we have a couple of the commissioners also pictured there. I also am in the process of creating a service learning course where my students will get to plan and execute the first Gullah Geechee initiative symposium on the, in the on the campus of the College of Coastal Georgia. So not only am I involved in this, but I want my students to be entrenched in the space as well. So they would have a respect for this place that they um, inhabit while they are here for those four years. Also, again, I mentioned the listening session that I am hosting soon. And I am also speaking at the 220th commemorative event for um, Ebo Land. Well, just a couple of events. This is just one to, to kind of show. I was invited to do a community talk um, as a part of an anti-racism um, committee in Savannah on African continuities and Daughters of the Dust. And it was an amazing experience. It was a great turnout. Um, it's just one of the examples that I'm, I'm giving um, in terms of opportunities to bridge academia and uh, community. Um, also on top of that, I, we did, I did two um, 
student research projects. One was um, for the Quarterman Keller uh, Scholarship um, that we have on campus. And these are Gullah Geechee community members. Um, and you can look up the, the wonderful um, foundation um, and it's it's about reparations and there's a lot that I could say there. But anyway, a part of that talk is that we had two student um, scholarship recipients who um, as a part of their scholarship had to give a, a research presentation. And I was um, in charge of one of the research projects and it was a wonderful experience. It was a wonderful event. Um, and um, community members came out in droves. And they were just so impressed with what the students did. We had one student who talked about um, some health concerns in terms of public health and uh, diabetes type two um, in the Gullah Geechee community. And then the student that I work with did film representations of uh, Gullah Geechee people and um, was able to even interview Queen Quet. So it's an amazing experience for them, but an amazing experience for us as faculty members to see them shine and to see the community be able to engage with the student. They gave, they asked very difficult questions. Um, they gave really sound advice. Um, but you know that they were a part of that and came out to support these uh, two undergraduate students was just amazing. I also have a graduate digital humanities project happening um, right now where I have a graduate assistant who is uh, developing a, a database of uh, resources in terms of uh, Gullah Geechee uh, resource sources that we have. Um, at our disposal for a faculty. I'm an affiliate faculty, both with Africana Studies and a cluster hire in uh, for the Gullah Geechee, uh, you know, cultural center. So those two uh, projects actually intersect a, a lot. And so I have a graduate student kind of gathering resources for all of our affiliate faculty and all different disciplines in the humanities and outside of the humanities, if they want to incorporate uh, Gullah Geechee into their actual uh, curriculum, um, which we're kind of pushing out and hoping that the university uh, you know, community will uh, embrace and, and get to. I was also able to um, write an internal grant and get a grant and invite two speakers, two Gullah Geechee uh, scholars from Morehouse, one of which I saw uh, her name, Dr. Claiborne, I, I see you here, shout out to you, uh, who came out and did um, a beautiful presentation for us um, and just really inspired um, both the faculty and the students. I had students writing me individually about um, how they were just blown away by these two um, scholars. Um, and they did, you know, just such a wonderful, um, fantastic job. And then lastly, <laughs> um, I am, I've been incorporating Gullah Geechee uh, studies into my courses for a really long time now, um, prior to even um, me being my tenure at uh, Georgia Southern. But I I am currently, because the Eva Landing and uh, River Solomon's uh, The Deep has inspired me in uh, quite a few ways, I'm currently um, about to offer a course in Black Mermaids um, to talk about African continuities, um, talk about water, talk about the significance of water, the function of water, and both literature, but also folklore and myth. Um, and how that is just such a, a relevant part. I mean, if you look at the landscape of Savannah, you look at where we are, you look at, you know, uh, Brunswick and St. Simon, we're surrounded by water. Um, and our ancestors read the water, they read the landscape, they, they understood the landscape. And it's within these myths and folklores that they left us and these continuities that they brought over with them from West Africa that we find our richest jewels. And so I'm hoping to roll this course out, uh, you know, uh, well, I am rolling it out, I don't hope. I better be rolling it out in the fall uh, to talk about all of these uh, wonderful things and expose our students on a, a broader level. Awesome, Joyce. I also want to just piggyback really quickly, um, uh, uh, Dr. Chloe Claiborne. Um, you know, she and uh, Sam Livingston, I had an opportunity to take uh, the Morehouse, the first Gullah Geechee class that happened back in 2015. The year I had graduated, and um, when I started getting back into um, this work within the, the Gullah Geechee culture and the communities, um, you know, we just kind of ran into each other at the Avery Research Center, and so we've been collaborating on a number of projects, one of which we, we did for their spring break trip, where they had an opportunity to bring about 25 students and staff um, through the entire, through most of the corridor, a, a nice large chunk of it. Um, they went from, y'all did not come down here. We did not, but we're going to be our <laughs> 
it's we, 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 we're trying to figure it out. It just need more days is the issue. But anyways, they had four days to go from Myrtle Beach all the way down to Hilton Head, really all the way down to Savannah. Um, and I had them running. There was literally not a day um, where we weren't doing something. And um, it was really a transformative experience because we had the opportunity to meet so many different people like um, Veronica Gerald and Lisa Bratton, um, uh, Dr. Uh, Eric Crawford. Um, we stopped at Freewoods Farm in Myrtle Beach. So they're doing a lot of really, really great work. I also wanted to shout out really quickly um, the Charles Joyner Institute at Coastal Carolina, who's also doing a lot of amazing work as well. Um, and Joyce, you were talking about the water mm -hmm. and just how how integral it is to, to who we are as, as Gullah Geechee people, right? Um, it is my, my belief that our mastery of the waters is what saved us from extinction. It, that is my belief. And so one of the songs um, that is on this project that I have, um, Seeking Soren, is called The Water. And it is uh, a, a, a telling of our journey here. It is uh, uh, coming on the bottom of those ships. It is a telling of our, our, our turn to the water to sustain us and to keep us alive. And so we're only gonna share a little bit of the song um, and then we'll have a little bit of time for questions. Can we hear it? that in my class so you got to come <laughs> and talk about this <laughs> well well we need to talk so my my plan with this project is to um do a series of listening sessions from now until the end of the year until december and in as many cultural spaces and as many classrooms as possible to engage um, students and community in a conversation about our culture and so if you know anyone who's online um in fact i stop sharing screen too soon. If you are a person who works uh, in a museum or at an academic institution, if you're a teacher um, in, in a K through 12 school, um, I'm also developing a curriculum around it uh, as well. I would love to connect with you. Um, so yeah, uh, stay connected with us. We're all, all on, on Instagram. All of our ads are there. We're also there for our email. So shoot us an email. If you are interested in um, in working with us in, in any capacity, if there is any supports that you have in your own institutions and in the places that you work, we would also love to connect with you to make sure that we can connect you with the communities and and identify um, how you can be of great support. Thank you all. Now we'll take some questions. Hopefully, we get some good ones. <laughs> all right. Let's give our our guest, an applause this is for this fascinating presentation. I have a lot of questions, but because <laughs> <laughs> this work so, of course, overlaps with what we do with the Lemon Project. I'm teaching a course in public humanities this semester, so there's so many thoughts that you all have put forth that we're grappling with. Um, but I'm going to wait for at least one or two of you in the chat to ask a question before I begin asking questions. So I'll give you a moment. Um, but again, thank you all so much for this for this wonderful presentation. I learned so much. 
my introduction to Gullah Geechee was Gullah Gullah Island as well. And then I met Queen Quet. And so <laughs> some years later, but real quick about Queen Quet, she is um leading a, a strong effort in St. Helena right now um, right. to help protect um to protect St. Helena. Mm -hmm. There's a developer who's who's purchased a, a large island and wants to build uh, golf courses. And there's a protective ordinance that was put in place uh, back in the 80s to, to not have any gated communities, to not have any golfing uh, uh, places there that are larger than six holes. But these people um, are crafty and have decided that they'd like to build three six hole courses in order to escape around building a full 18 um course uh golf course that they cannot do right they can only build six holes at a time and so there's a lot of uh she's doing a lot of great things uh in St. Helena right now to to stop that I'm, I'm happy to know that I mean you just brought up an important point of how do we use the humanities and activist work um and if you have a question please uh enter your question in the chat I see some hands raised but we prefer that you enter the questions in the chat and we have one here um especially in the K through 12 schools, have you all met any resistance to adding this history to their curriculum or holding events? I knew that question was coming. <laughs> Actually, none of us are in K through 12. However, I am uh, aware of Queen Mother Eunice Moore out of McIntosh County, Georgia, where they have actually put it into their history curriculum, where she goes into schools, I think every Tuesday and Thursday, and she gives um, Gullah Geechee history about what happened in McIntosh County as well as Glenn County. And also, so within the curriculum in South Carolina K through 12, it's an actual standard that has to be taught in both fourth grade and eighth grade. Uh, and so if you are doing um, Gullah Geechee related um, work, you wanna target those grades because they already have standards in the curriculum that, that you can use to justify the teaching of our history. And also I'll just add that um, Georgia Southern's um, Center is actually working with our College of Education um, for teaching our next cadre of teachers, um, Gullah Geechee history and curriculum to put into the schools, but also um, we have some uh, grant programs that we're hoping uh, get funded uh, soon here where we're actually going to be training, um, going on and training K through 12 teachers in the system um, so that they can actually start teaching um, more Gullah Geechee uh, history within the, the school. I was going to ask, how does this project become a model for other uh, universities that want to do similar work? It's a good question. <laughs> right, I, wish, I wish we could bring Corey on because I think that they are doing a really, really fantastic work um, with that. And I think that I wish you could bring her on. Um, they have a great, yeah. great um, <laughs> If she's yeah. on now, I don't know if she wants to put her on the spot. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's, I mean, you know, private and, and public is, is uh, different entities altogether, right? I, I come from, I'm at a public university, I'm not at a private university. So um, it really has to be, an in, I think, in, in internal, you have to have internal buy-in first. Um, and then I think, um, you know, then you can start building models, but it really takes I think all efforts and um, right now that's what we're doing we're trying to actually build a model so we are we dr claiborne came on in um and she she laid that thing down and dr livingston came in and laid it down you know but it, it's really working together rather than working in silos that's what i'm finding at the very least um not just within my university but outside that this is a shared project um, this is something that has to be a buy-in for all of us, um, that we can't be doing individual work um, because that's not going to work. Um, and that that becomes about self and not about the people who we actually are, are trying to highlight and the culture that we're trying to preserve and conserve. And so I think that, you know, the model really has to be a community-based one a yeah. grassroots community-based model. Um, that, that's the only thing that actually works um, mm -hmm. and that is going to work to actually preserve this culture because other than that, we're working in silos, working against each other, we're trying to compete against each other. And that's not what community is about. And that's not what Gullah Geechee community is about at its basis. So. Absolutely, Joyce. We, or myself, <laughs> um, we're all about the buy-in and that's the... I hate to use the term resistance, but that's the resistance that I'm facing. If you don't have those people that are committed to these projects, it's not going to happen. 
So here, and me trying to establish this initiative, at first I said a Gullah Geechee Institute, but administration, they heard institute, money, mm -hmm. <laughs> faculty, <laughs> and building. And I was like, oh no, let's just scale it back to initiative. And like have these faculty members and these community members come in and say, we're all interested and invested in actually having these programs available to the next generation of leaders as well as cultural, um, you know, culture bears. Yeah, mm -hmm. culture bears. Yeah. We have a question from Davina Lloyd. What is the most trusted resource to learn about Gullah Geechee culture in Myrtle Beach? I'm a member of Gullah Geechee Chamber of Commerce, but I've only lived here uh, for one year and still learning. There is a book on Atlantic Beach in particular, and I do not know the author's name, but if you give me before the end of this, I will find it. But there is a specific book about um, Gullah Geechee culture. There's also a documentary on Charlie's Place, um, which was one of the uh, nightclub juke jorts um, that was actually uh, integrated, but black owned. Um, and that's actually where you get the the dance, the shag um, that comes out of out of that that nightclub the charleston's you know but sorry the shag let's focus on it <laughs> um but also if you are in atlantic beach come to the festival there will be speakers talking specifically about the history of Gullah Geechee communities in myrtle beach all right great this question is from lorenzo uh, mcduffie how does your projects intersect with black folk who are doing genealogy about the Gullah Geechee route i have that question a similar question as well in terms of those who are doing the genealogy, as I am, and I'm finding some, finding some South Carolina, you know, folk popping up on my tree. And so, uh, so yeah, can you speak to that, uh, either of you? Hi, Lorenzo, by the way. <laughs> Hello, Lorenzo. We know Lorenzo. <laughs> Lorenzo is one of our classmates at Clark. Yes, okay. yes, yes. So we're, we're happy to, to hear from him from Puerto Rico, I think, right? From Puerto Rico. <laughs> All the way from Puerto Rico. Um, I, this is a, this is actually my summer, one of my summer projects that I'm hoping, you know, you, you have a thousand summer projects, but this is definitely one of my summer projects that started a while ago. When my parents' 50th uh, wedding anniversary, one of the gifts that um, I wanted to give to them was a family tree um, on both sides. And so um, I was only able to do, because <laughs> I, I undertook more than I, I thought. Um, but anyway, I was only able to do um, part of my dad's uh, tree, and it's my dad's uh, side of the family. Although, I don't know, now that I'm starting to do this research, I actually think my mom, my mom's side of the family is Gullah Geechee too, <laughs> because of some of the, the research that I've been doing. So we'll have to see. But it is a part of my um, summer research, just on a personal level level to get to know and get connected back to those roots. I have family still in Hemingway, South Carolina, who know the site of the plantation where my ancestors were enslaved. And so I've got to get back to them. I've mm -hmm. got to, you know, reconnect with them. Um, you know, the pandemic was hard in terms of lost connections. This also connects to what I do in terms of academia and my research in terms of finding out and figuring out these, not just the African continuities, but, you know, just really the lifeline of our people, like where they come from, what they contributed, you know, what they knew, who they were. Um, so on a personal level, it's something that I'm, I'm just interested in, in doing. So this is a lifelong study for me. But then on an academic level, I think it's important also, and it's a, it's a beautiful intersection for me, which is why I was so excited about this, you know, faculty line and I was like, oh my goodness, I get to do the things that I, I'm going to do anyway, um, you know, and, and, and get credit for it, you know, when it's not really, you know, it's not work for me, right? It's, it's not something that feels like work. It's something that I'm interested in. It's something that I think about. It's something that I long for. Um, it's something that's needed. Um, and I, it's a gift that I want to give to my dad, um, you know, before he leaves, leaves this earth, um, no time soon, but, you know, <laughs> before he leaves this earth, I want to, to give that back to him because it's really because of him that I'm even this interested in culture itself. Like he, he really, um, you know, burnt a fire underneath our butts, <laughs> so to speak, as, as children to be interested in who we are and where we come from. So it's it's the intersection between the personal and the academic for me um, that is, is, is truly important. I hope I answered that question, by the way. Oh, absolutely. I was gonna ask even about that in terms of sometimes there's tension between the, ac the academy and communities outside of it. How are you navigating that? 
because sometimes there's understandable reluctance to communities because they have endured injustices about the academy. So how are you working through that process? Well, I mean, you know, that is, is such a great question. I mean, uh, that's the reality, right? Um, mm -hmm. And I think for Gullah Geechee, so much of their culture has been uh, either co-opted uh, in a way, if I can say it that way, or erased in a lot of other ways. And we, we see it's still happening. All the, I mean, Tindaji's example of mm -hmm. what's happening. I mean, that's, that's a great example of the ways in which these places that are sacred ground, hollow ground um, for the Gullah Geechee are being um, really taken, you know, and with, all sorts of methods being taken away. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it becomes about, um, I had some great advice, a great talk when I was, uh, my student was doing a presentation. I had um, a, a lot of conversation with community members afterwards. Um, and they were really interested in the students coming, you know, to the communities and getting to know one student is Gullah Geechee and the other isn't. But anyway, the one that was doing um, more MPH work, they wanted her to come to the community. But one of the things that they said, and one of the, the things that I, I understand is that we need to know who you are, right? We need to know that you're invested really for the right reasons in us. And so for me, it's about being a part of the community, talking to community el elders, being accessible to them, um, you know, studying on my own, going to beautiful events that Tendaji puts on, um, you know, just really kind of reestablishing myself and reconnecting even with my family members who might be reticent to talk to someone who is outside of, but, uh, you know, luckily I have that kind of um, um, access, but um, in terms of, you know, family status, so they know who I am, <laughs> you know, in that sense. But there is that tension. And we have to be careful about coming from the academy. We have to be very careful and delicate um, about the way that we approach them. And I think if you come, you know, come towards the project um, from a community mindedness, that I'm not trying to, you know, steal your word or, you know, steal your voice or co opted in any way, like, you know, that this is about me and you, right? Mm -hmm. This is about us. This is about the greater, you know, understanding that I, I, I think that the community is, is loving and wonderful and open. Um, but, you know, at the same time, they are protective um, mm -hmm. and for right, rightful reasons. Um, so oh. it, it is a, a negotiation. Sorry, I'm talking too much. <laughs> no, and, and I think also, right, think about ways that they can begin to reap monetarily from, from what they're giving, right? right? Um, are, is there a book project that they could participate in with the Academy so that they can begin doing speaking tours on their own, right? We want to really start putting uh, the community in positions to, to be the stewards of their own stories. Mm -hmm. Right. Also, it's great to know people <laughs> Tendaji has introduced me to many people in this space and through his introductions I began to build my own relationships with them so it's good to have that person who's like okay this is a person that you should know okay we have two more questions and let's see if we can get them both <laughs> um, how does Gullah Geechee culture and arts translate into museum spaces? And are there any exhibits reflective of the history and culture? I think y'all talked about that some, but I'll, if you want to expand on it. Really quickly, because uh, we are wrapped for time, I, I think. But uh, there is a, a exhibit in Hilton Head at the Coastal Discovery Museum right now called Benya, the Faces of the Gullah Geechee. And it is a artistic portraits of culture bearers um, throughout time, living and dead. Um, and so it, 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 and it also highlights some young people who, um, like me, are uh, emerging in this space. And so I think that's one of the, one of the things. Also, in other places um, uh, that don't specifically identify as Gullah Geechee, there are places that have sweetgrass baskets, but don't, uh, don't uh, credit it to Gullah Geechee people in the text, right? Um, those are the kinds of things, in, as far as updating a museum space that currently have Gullah Geechee things in it, right? Um, yeah. That last question is, you can say, I'm just going to read part of this, is what kind of support from local, state, and national government representatives to preserve and protect St. Helena Pine Island's culture from um, commercial encroachment? Um, 
can the Gullah Geechee Nation bring litigation against aggressive commercial encroachment? Um, I, I, I don't know. And so I don't want to answer that question. Um, what I can say is that um, there is a, a protective overlay that is already in place and is being strengthened. Um, I believe they will have another vote. There's two more votes that have to happen, but it looks like um, they will be able to deter the developers from moving forward with the project. And the community has been incredible by this. They, they have really, really shown out in a really remarkable way. I'm super proud of uh, my community and say hello. Great. Well, our time, our time has come to an end, but this has been wonderful. Thank you so much, Kyle. Thank you so much, Tendaji and Joyce, for this very informative session. There, it has been recorded, so it will be available for those who want to check it out on YouTube in a couple of days. Thank you so much to everyone who, who's joined us this evening. We have about, let me see, 40, 45 participants. Great. On a Thursday night, again, Check out our Lemon Project programs, follow us on our social media platforms, and we hope you have a good weekend. Thank you. Bye.